Have you ever felt like you're behind on your actuarial journey? Like your peers are just so far ahead of you? They have the 4.0 GPA, they have three exams passed, they have two internships, and they have a job lined up for them right after they graduate. Or maybe you're a career changer, feeling like you started too late. You're not a fresh grad right out of school, and you're not even sure if employers are going to look at you since they have so many other options. Well, what if I told you that starting late and being behind is actually pretty beneficial? I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. Now, as someone that has talked to future actuaries almost every single day for the past year and actually longer than that, I have noticed a common trend. You're all comparing yourselves to each other. You are comparing yourself to Fred over here who has a 3.0 GPA and one exam passed. Fred's over here comparing himself to Joe with a summer internship and a 4.0 GPA. Joe's looking at Amber with five years of underwriting experience and two exams passed. And Amber's looking at you thinking, wow, you have such an advantage over me because you're a fresh grad and you have two years of data analysis experience. You see, if you're like most future actuaries, you're comparing yourself to everyone else, thinking that the qualifications that they have are better than the ones that you have. And at the same time, you're feeling discouraged. It's creating a constant noise in your head. You're feeling guilty. You're feeling behind all because you are not where you think you should be right now. Now, don't get me wrong. There are different levels of candidates. I actually talked about that in a video a few weeks ago. I will link it right here if you'd like to go watch after. But just because you're at this level and Aaron's up here at this level, it doesn't mean that you're behind where you're supposed to be. It doesn't mean that you're too late. It doesn't mean that you have a less chance of getting hired. You both can and will get there if you become top actuarial candidates. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how many exams you passed in school. It doesn't matter what your GPA is. It doesn't matter if you had an internship or not. You can still become a top candidate with without all these things. You see, the great thing about an actuarial career is that it's very qualifications based. It's very step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. And eventually you keep following those steps and you will become a top actuarial candidate. And you can do those steps no matter how old you are, no matter where you are in the world, at whatever pace you'd like to go, it doesn't matter. You can still do them. And that means that you can become a top candidate and you can get hired. But it's no fair to yourself and it's discouraging if you're looking at everything Thing Andrew over here has accomplished and for some reason you think that you should be there too and even if you were there you'd probably be comparing yourself to Amelia over here instead okay so here's what you need to know everyone is working under completely different conditions than you are so that means that there's not really someone that's ahead of where they're supposed to be someone that's behind where they're supposed to be you just are where you are because of the conditions that you are in maybe Tim over here doesn't have to work so he can spend all his time studying for actuarial exams and pursuing his career, but that might not be the case for you. Maybe he doesn't have friends and family that he wants to spend time with. I'm guessing you do have friends and family that you want to spend time with and it's a priority for you. Maybe his mom is in the insurance industry and she was able to connect him with an actuary that works in the insurance company and that allowed him to get his foot in the door. Not everyone has that. Maybe he just has a talent for catching on to things really, really quickly. Maybe he doesn't care about exercising and self-care. Maybe you do. You see, you're comparing your qualifications right now now to his qualifications right now, but you're both working under completely different circumstances. You both have different priorities and neither of those is right or wrong. They just are. And because of that, you cannot compare yourself to where you are relative to anyone else on their actuarial journey. Now, I hope that you see you are not behind. There's not an employer out there sitting around saying, oh, John has supposed to have passed two exams by now and he should have had an internship too, but he doesn't, so I guess we're not gonna hire him, right? Do you really think employers are sitting around thinking that? No, they are not. They have better things to do. All they care about is that you have met these qualifications, not when you did it, how you did it, what age you were when you did it. They don't care. They just want you to have the qualifications. So now at the beginning of this video, I said that being behind is actually beneficial, but before we get into that, I wanted to ask, would you please give this video a thumbs up if it has helped you so far and that will help it spread to more aspiring actuaries and future actuaries that really need this information. Thank you so much. So here's why being behind could actually be considered a good thing or beneficial for you. Number one is that it means you're going to have an interesting story to tell to employers. Every single actuary out there has struggled with things in their actuarial journey. Every single person has struggled with different things in their life and for you to be able to tell the story of the different problems 
problems that you went through, the things that you overcame throughout your actuarial journey is just going to help make you more connected to the people that interview you. It's also a good way to differentiate yourself from other candidates that maybe even have more qualifications than you do. A story is a great way to connect with employers and that's a huge advantage that you're going to have as someone that has maybe had to go through different hurdles to achieve the success that you've achieved today and that you will achieve in the future. Number two is that it means that you're not all about study, 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 study. It's not all about becoming an actuary for you. It means that you're actually going to be able to have meaningful and insightful conversations about things other than math and actuaries with your coworkers when you get the job. And that's something that not everyone can say. A lot of aspiring actuaries do just focus all their time on this. And those might be the people you're comparing yourself to, but they're not actually going to be able to talk to a coworker one-on-one -on -one and just have a good conversation about something like sports, something like their family, something like a movie that they watched last night, because the people that are spending all of their time studying don't participate in those other things. Number three is that you go after your goals even when the situation might not be ideal. And that's going to prove to employers that you are really dedicated. You're committed to the actuarial career because you're willing to keep going and keep pursuing this goal even though the circumstances aren't ideal, even though there are obstacles that you have to overcome. You're gonna keep going and that's something that employers are going to admire. Number four is that you've already learned how to manage your time. You've learned how to fit studying into your schedule and fit your actuarial goals into your schedule despite having a whole bunch of other priorities in your life like work and yes that's going to be important when you get a job because you're not going to have all the time in the world to study for your exams and pursue other actuarial goals you're going to have to work you're going to have to eat you're going to have to sleep you're going to have to look after your family or spend time with your family and that's all important even when you're working in an actuarial role so if you can prove that now during this time when you're pursuing the actuarial field and you want to get a job that you've been able to actually do all these things at the same time as you've been studying for exams and pursuing your actuarial goals, that's going to help give employers more confidence that you're going to be able to do this even when you start working. And number five is that you don't have time to waste. And because of that, you're being forced right now to solve a problem. You're trying to figure out how you're going to become a top actuarial candidate with very little time. And that's not an easy situation to be in. Others may be okay with dilly-dallying because they have all the time in the world but you just don't have that kind of time. So you're going to go look for solutions. And problem solving is one of the skills that actuarial employers will find so beneficial and so valuable in a top actuarial candidate. So not only are you going to be able to speed up the time it takes to become a top actuarial candidate and get your first job, but this is also something that you'll be able to talk about during interviews because problem solving is a very valuable skill to actuarial employers. So next time you catch yourself comparing your qualifications to someone else's remember these three things number one you have no idea what their circumstances and priorities are and how those compare to yours and number two is that your dedication your commitment your determination to continue to go after your actuarial dream even when it hasn't been easy is admirable to actuarial employers and number three is that you're both going to reach your goals it's not a race if you become a top actuarial candidate you will get hired how quickly you become a top actuarial candidate really doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. So now becoming a top actuarial candidate is something that I've talked about a lot in this video. So if you want to learn more about how to do that, make sure you go watch this video right here because it's going to explain exactly what you need to do to become a top candidate and get noticed by employers. Becoming a top actuarial candidate is the best way to get an actuarial job and it's going to open up more opportunities for you. When you have more opportunities, that means you have more options. It means that you get to decide on the culture that you want to work in. It means you get to decide on the people you want to work with. It means you get to decide on the type of work that you want to do. An employer doesn't automatically get to hire you just because they are your only option. Top actuarial candidates have options. So that is all for today's video. I will see you next week. Bye for now.